Hi, welcome to my video. This video is part 6 for your FA1. So in this chapter, chapter 6, you can learn the concept of back and doubtful debts. So upon completion of this chapter, you should be able to understand the effect of bad debts, bad debts recovery, and also provision for doubtful debts on income statement and statement of financial position. You can also understand the accounting treatment for your bad debts, bad debts recovery, and provision for doubtful debts. So let's start from the concept of bad debts. So in business, this is reasonable that a business cannot fully collect the outstanding amount from its receivable. Thus, the accounting record shall reflect this issue. So if you have uncollected amount from your customer or receivables, this we call bad debts. This is the uncollected amount from receivable bad debt is an expenses of a company. So let me illustrate for you why we have a bad debt situation. So we know, let's say this is your company and you sell to your customer in credit. So this is your customer. So this is your customer. You sell product, for example, 10,000 to your customer in credit. In credit means no immediate collection, okay? No immediate collection. So what is our accounting entry? Our accounting entry will be debit, track receivables, and we credit to our sales account or revenue account to show that the credit sales to customer and unfortunately this customer run away this customer have no money to pay back the outstanding amount owing to you this customer run away so this um, collected amount we treat as bad debts of the company and bad debts is an expenses of the company. So let's start classroom exercise 6.1 to understand the concept of bad debts. So before that, the accounting treatment of bad debts, we debit the bad debts account. Bad debt account is your expenses under income statement and track receivable track receivables account on credit. So it's asset and SIP. So classroom exercise 6.1. SWP Corporation is the track receivable of TCP Limited. The outstanding balance as at 1st January 2016 is 16,300. It means that SWP is the track receivable for who? For TCP Limited. During the year, TCP Limited has made a credit sales to SWP Corporation on 1st of February 216 amounting to 23,000 and SWP make a payment of 38,000 by bank transfer and TCP limited on 1st July 216 and then subsequently SWP has declared bank club on 1st December 216 and the remaining balances has been recognized as bad debts. So based on the above information, you are required to prepare track receivables account for SWP Corporation and the bad debts account. So we start from the opening balances of track receivables account. You can use the account here, but I will use Excel for a better presentation. All right, first we record the opening balances, which is 2016, am I right? 2016, yes, 1st of January. The balances is 16,300. So this will be balance brought down. It means that the unpaid amount at the beginning of the year. So during the year, we sell 23,000 of the product to him, right? On 1st of February. So we will debit our track receivables account. 23,000 and credit to sales account. On 1st July, he paid us 
38,000 by bank transfer. So we debit the bank account and credit to track receivables account. Let's check it's first July or not. Yes. So 38,000. So we write bank because it's bank transfer. And it say that at December, 1st of December, T uh, SWP Corporation declare bank up and the remaining balances will be treated as a bad debt. So now we have to do an analysis. How much that SWP Corporation still owing to us? Beginning of the year, owing 16,000. During the year, purchase us, we sell another 23,000 to him. And then he pay us 38,000. So the total debit balance is 39 and 38 for the credit. It means that the difference is how much? 1,003. This 1,003 represent the unpaid amount from SWP Corporation and this amount will be treated as what? Bad debts on 1st of December. And this bad debts, we credit the track receivables account and we will debit the bad debts account because this is the expenses of the company. Thousand three. And at the end of the year, this amount we will transfer to our income statement as an expenses. That's all for classroom exercise 6.1. So from here, you can see that there is no more balance CD and BD between trade receivables SWP corporation with us because all the unpaid amount 1003 has been treated as bad debts. And unlikely that we will still do business with SWP corporation if they are bankrupt or they are not able to make payment to us. And this 1003 unpaid amount will be recognized as a bad debts of the company and this is an expenses under income statement. So this is classroom exercise 6.1. So let's look at classroom exercise 6.2. We have another situation called bad debts recovery. So what is bad debts recovery? Bad debts recovery is the amount that we that are recognized as bad debts in the previous year, but collected subsequently. It means that an amount which is unpaid from our customer we treated as a bad debt previously but thank god that this receivable pay us after that subsequently bad debt recovery is an income for the company it shall be recognized upon the collection from the receivables it means that if the bad debts the previous bad debts receivable pay us the money when they pay us money we have to recognize bad debt recovery as an income for the company Accounting treatment for bad debts recovery, we debit the bank account because you must show the collection upon the collection. You must show the collection and then we credit to the bad debts recovery account. So let's have a look on classroom exercise 6.2. General Enterprise has closed its account on 31st December every year. On 31st December 216, a customer TCP Limited is not able is not able to pay the outstanding amount. Thus, General Enterprise decided to recognize the outstanding amount as bad debts. The total amount due from TCP Limited as at 31st December 216 is 15,000. On 1st July 217, TCP Limited has made a payment of 10,000 by bank to General Enterprise in respect of previous year unpaid amount. No other payments has been received from TCP Limited subsequently. So based on the above information, we are required to prepare the account as at 31st December 216 and 217. So we have to prepare track receivables account for TCP Limited, bad debts account and bad debts recovery account. So we start from the track receivables account. The company year end is closed at December. So the beginning will be 1st January 2016. So let's have a look. So 216, 
1st of January. We have a balance from TCP Limited. Fifteen thousand, and at the end of December, we notice that TCP cannot pay this money, so this amount we will recognize as bad debts, and this amount will debit to the bad debts account. First, we record the opening balances, and then we record at the end of the year, we treated the unpaid amount as bad apps. So after that, we can close the account. So for trade receivable account, there is no more balances between us with TCP. Next, for bad apps account, we have to recognize this amount as what? As the expenses of the company. That's why we record under income statement. Next, the situation say that on 1st July 2017, TCP make 10,000 payment to us in respect of the previous year. So the double entry, we debit the bank account and credit to bad debts recovery account. 1st of July. So we write bank because debit bank credit to bad debts recovery amount 10,000. And at the end of 2017, we have to transfer this amount to income statement as, then, as an income for the company. So that's all for Classroom SSI 6.2. So this Two exercise 6.1 and 6.2 is used to explain the concept of bad apps and bad apps recovery. If you have any question on this video, you can leave me a message in RMS or use the comment function in YouTube channel. So that's all for this video. In the next video, I'm going to share with you the concept of provision for doubtful debts.